Yesterday's uh, lecture didn't go too well. I think I tried to put too much in it, so I'd like to do a simplified, stripped-down version of it, and this is a lesson on work and kinetic energy. which acts as an alternative to the equations of motion. And I'll say it once and I'll say it again. Um, the one thing that work and energy can't really help you find is, is time. So I think when I added the element of time, I made things a little too complex. So let's talk about um, an elevator taking a trip. This is a common physics example when uh, you have things that are accelerating or whatnot. And we're going to start with this elevator on the ground floor. And this elevator is going to have a mass of 1,000 kilograms. And there'll be some sort of cable exerting some sort of tension. And um, this elevator is going to start with an initial velocity of zero, but it has just been put into service and someone has requested a higher floor, so it has an acceleration upwards of one meter per second squared. And what I'd like to know is I would like to know, uh, I'll put it over here, I'd like to know what the tension in the cable is to pull this off. I'd like to know how much work is done by that tension. I'd like to know how much work is done by gravity. Um, I'd like to know the change in kinetic energy, and I'd like to know the final velocity. And these uh, five things we're going to solve for about three times in a row, so you'll see how this all goes together. Okay, first item of business, uh, finding the tension in the cable. Let's see. Oh, I need to give you one more piece of information, and that is that this entire process is going to happen uh, for 20 meters of displacement. Okay, so the elevator is going to accelerate up for 20 meters, and then we're going to have it do something else after the first 20 meters. Excellent. I think I'm ready to go. First thing we need to do is draw ourselves a free body diagram, and that's going to have a tension force upwards and weight downwards. Now, the weight force is fairly simple. Wow, that's a little out of focus. I'm going to have to draw that bigger next time. Um, we take the mass, and we multiply by the local acceleration due to gravity, and I'm going to use 10. So that gives me 10,000 newtons. Now we know that we're going to need a little more tension than 10,000 newtons because we have an upwards acceleration of one meter per second. So let's use Newton's second law. F net equals m times a. The net force is the tension upwards minus weight downwards, and that's going to equal the mass of the elevator times its acceleration. And we know most of these things except for t. So t minus 10,000 is going to equal 1,000 times 1. All right, this is 1,000 on the right. This is 10,000 negative on the left. comes over as a uh, positive 10,000, and the tension turns out to be 11,000 newtons. So we have our first answer, 11,000 newtons. All right, time to figure out what work is done, and the work done by the tension is going to be the Tension itself times the displacement, so 11,000 newtons times 20 meters. And yes, I could easily do this in my head, but I want to make sure we get this right. Right number of zeros, 220,000 joules. It's a big number, but don't worry, joules are a small amount of energy, so that's a reasonable number for a an elevator. Okay, let's look at the work done by gravity. That would be the force of gravity, which is minus mg, times the displacement. Now, I'm putting minus mg here, and in the past we've just treated this as if it was um, uh, a magnitude, and we dealt with the direction separately. You could think of it that way as well. Uh, that would be mg times d times the cosine of the angle between them, which is 180. Either way, you're going to get a negative sign here. This is negative work being done by gravity. In other words, uh, gravity is pulling downwards, but the elevator is moving upwards. So gravity is getting, uh, gravity is removing energy from the system, and uh, the tension is adding energy to the system. Positive number, negative number. All right. So what we need here is minus. 1,000 times 10 times 20, and indeed this is minus 220,000. Hello, Harmon, you are silly. It's only minus 200,000 
joules. So negative 200,000 joules. So how much is the kinetic energy going to change? And the kinetic energy change because it, uh, it is equal to the work, the net work done. This is the uh, work energy theorem. It says that the net work done equals the change in energy. And in this case, it's a change in kinetic energy. So the net work done is just going to be the sum of the work done by the tension plus the work done by gravity. Positive number, negative number. And the difference here is going to be a big old whopping positive 20,000 joules. In other words, the tension in the elevator, the work done by that, is almost entirely removed by the work done by gravity, but there's an extra 20,000 that's going to go into making the elevator speed up. And to find that speed, well, to find this speed right here, we need to do a little bit of work. So we're going to go ahead and, and take a look at this expression, and we're going to write out what the change in kinetic energy is. So it's the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. That's the change in kinetic energy. Now, since the mass doesn't usually change, we can factor out the one-half of mass, and we can say that the net work equals one-half of mass times V final squared minus V initial squared. And putting the numbers in, we have 20,000 here equals half of 1,000, which is 500. And then we have V final squared minus 0 squared. Okay, so dividing 500 into 20,000 gives me 40. So we now need to take a square root, and that gives me, what is that, 6.32? Got a little glare here today. All right, so that's going to be 6.32 meters per second. If you'd like to go ahead and let's just uh, let's divide this up a little bit. We calculated free body diagram, we found some works, and from the works we found a change in kinetic energy. These are all the things we solved for. You could double check the 6.32 with the equations of motion to make sure that all this is equivalent. Let's see now, how would you do that? Let's see, we have starting velocity, distance, acceleration. We're looking for a final velocity. I think we're going to be using the a, a equation that is, uh, here, let me get a little, ooh, almost lost a pen. Let's get a little piece of paper over here and do this real quick. We would probably be using this one. Uh, so it's b final squared equals 0 squared plus 2 times 1 times 20. That is indeed 40. So v final squared equals 40. And you get v final equals 6.32 meters per second. Now you might say, hey, uh, Harmon, th this was faster than this. Yeah, but we found five different things doing this. All right, we, we can answer many more questions than just this. Okay, so agreed. If all you were being asked for was the final velocity, this might be a little bit of overkill. But you'll see. Things change a little bit here. So let's do uh, the next thing. So we, we've reached our 6.32 meters per second of cruising speed. And now uh, we're going to continue cruising in the building at that speed. So uh, this is 1,000 kilograms. How's that? A little better? Yes, it is. Um, we are going to have a speed, initial speed, of 6.32 meters per second, and we're going to have an acceleration of zero. And we're going to do that for, well, let's go another 20 meters, okay? That's about uh, three or four stories. No, not quite four. Definitely three. Okay, so we're going to answer the same questions. What's the tension? How much work is done by that tension? How much work is done by gravity? What's the change in kinetic energy, and what is the final velocity? By the way, long story short, if we have no acceleration, and this is our starting speed, then we are going to have that as our final velocity. So we'll have a, t a check on our process here. But let's see what else happens. Okay, free body diagram time. Tension, weight. The weight is 10,000 as it was last time. 
And because there is no acceleration, F net equals M times A equals zero, that means that this will also be 10,000 newtons. This is an equilibrium situation, and we know that opposing forces are equal to each other in equilibrium situations. Very good. Now it's time to find out how much work that force does. The work done by tension is going to be the tension times the displacement, and in this case that's going to be 10,000 times 20, which is 200 thousand joules you know I'm not so this is why uh, scientific notation was invented all these zeros and all this comma drawing it gets a little wearisome also there's a tendency to put the wrong number of zeros down just a accounting error and that can cost you how about the work done by gravity well it's going to be the same as before it's going to be a minus mgd and in this case that's going to be minus 200,000 joules. Which means the net work is equal to zero. Thus, the change in kinetic energy is equal to zero. Well, I'm not taking as much space this time, am I? Yeah, well, first of all, this is a simpler problem. And second of all, we've already showed the equations and showed what we're going to do, so we can quickly get through this and get some answers. If there's no addition of kinetic energy, it's easy to show that there's no um, change in the velocity, but we can do that over here. We can say that the net work equals one-half of the mass times V final squared minus V initial squared. Again, this is the change in kinetic energy over here. And so 0 equals 500 times V final squared minus 6.32 squared. And the only way that this can be 0 is if this is 0. So V final must be equal to 6.32 meters per second. Boring and trivial, but there it is. Okay, last one. Last one. The elevator needs to stop now. The elevator needs to come to a halt. The elevator... There we go. Okay, same 1,000 kilogram elevator. Tension up top, only now we are going to have a starting velocity of 6.32. We are going to have an acceleration of minus one, oops, one meter per second squared. Almost tried to draw a half there for some reason. And we're going to find the same things as before. How much tension? How much work done by the tension? How much work done by gravity? What is the change in kinetic energy? And, of course, what is the final velocity? Okay, um, free body diagram. Training wheels. Tension going upwards, mg going downwards. mg is 10,000 newtons as before. Now we do have an acceleration, so F net equals m times a. Tension minus 10,000 equals 1,000 times minus 1. This is a negative 1,000. This is a negative 10,000 on that side. It comes over as a positive 10,000 and gets 1,000 subtracted from it, meaning that the T is 9,000 newtons. Again, if you were in class, we did all this, but I think the way I set it up just uh, put too much on the table. That's all I'm saying. Okay, work done by this... Uh, uh, force, work done by tension, is going to be the tension times the displacement, so that's 9,000 times 20. Just to be complete, I know what the number is, but 180,000. Switching to green for the work done by gravity, which hasn't changed in this uh, example because I keep doing... oh. I didn't say the distance was 20 centimeters, or uh, 20 meters. Huh. I suppose we can figure out, well, no, once you say the acceleration is minus 1. Okay. Um, where was I? Yes, this is the same. This is minus mgd, and this is going to turn out to be minus 200,000 joules. Okay, so minus 200,000 joules, 
180,000 joules. Go into scientific notation next time. So our uh, change in kinetic energy is going to be a negative 20,000 joules. We're going to lose 20,000 joules. So W net equals the change in kinetic energy. Uh, w net equals one half of the mass times V final squared minus V initial squared. W net is minus 20,000. Half of the mass is 500. V final squared minus 6.32 squared. Just for fun, 6.32 squared should turn out to be 40. Yeah, 39.94. So that's going to be 40. So dividing here, we have 20,000 divided by 500. That's 40. So minus 40 equals V final squared minus 40. Uh, no matter how you slice it, you're going to get that V final is equal to zero. Either you bring this 40 over here, it cancels that, and V final equals zero, or you realize that what minus 40 equals minus 40 has got to be zero. So this would be zero meters per second. And indeed, the elevator manages to stop at the floor. So we've had a 60 meter journey of an elevator and uh, it's accelerated, it's cruised, and it's come to a stop. We can see that the work done by gravity is a constant amount. Um, the work done by the tension is different because the tension changes during this problem and any discrepancy in the work done uh, shows up as a change in kinetic energy. Uh, could also show up as a change in potential energy and in fact when we uh, get into chapter 8 on potential energy you're going to see that this work done by gravity down here, m times g times d, is actually the change in potential energy. So what we can do is we can treat the gravitational force as some sort, some sort of thing that's internal to the system and just figure out the work done by the tension and subtract away any change in potential energy and the remainder will go into kinetic energy. And that is a way that I like to think about energy as all the forms of energy being kind of equal, work, potential, and kinetic, and you can move around between them if you design a machine that does that. One last thing I wanna say is that we found the net work by subtracting two different works. Another way to find the net work would be to take the net force and multiply by the displacement. That is also acceptable. And you can see that they do lead to the same thing, as long as the displacement is the same. So um, there you go. I think that's a little bit cleaner version. And I'm going to ask anybody who was slightly confused by yesterday's lecture to go ahead and watch this, not take notes, just watch it, and uh, maybe even on a faster speed, and uh, enjoy.